My name is Ann Hartzog Hall, and I was married to Hartley Hall, who became the senior pastor at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Nashville, Tennessee. We were in Tyler, Texas, and two churches called Hartley to be minister. Uh, one was Second Presbyterian in Richmond, Virginia, and the other was uh, Westminster in Nashville. So we wound up in Nashville, and we were there eight years, and loved every minute of it. I was glad to leave Tyler, Texas, because integration there was really hard, and I had started an integrated group of black and white women called WE, and John Burt Society got after me, and they're still alive and well in Tyler, Texas. So we went to Nashville, and when we arrived in 73, uh, Broadway was closed down because there was a baby grand piano, and they were playing music, and they were uh, entertaining people from Music Road. And that was my introduction to Nashville, Tennessee, on Broad Street. Um, we just had, I think, some of our best growing years with me and the family there. Uh, the church was very friendly, wonderful, and when we went through the church in blue jeans and barefooted to see, see our church, um, the police arrested us because they thought we were breaking into Salvador. And we called Sherwood Harvard, who was the associate pastor, and said, Sherwood, help, what do we do? And he just laughed and he came down and freed us up. So um, that was our beginning at Westminster. Um, so outsta I have many outstanding memories. Uh, one is a time when um, I taught in the fifth and sixth grades, and uh, we just had a wonderful time and had a young friend who played the guitar, and uh, we had a, a really good time with the uh, fifth and sixth graders. So Very the, close to the Boons and the Thorps, um, who were on the pulpit, the search committee, who had called us there. And I said to Marie Thorpe, we're going through menopause and we're going to grow old together and we'll help each other. I got very close to those people and Pansy Duke at the time was director of Christian education. And my girls and Hartley, they were pretty lost with a big move. And Pansy came to our rescue and set up the girls in programs. And, and Rich Penuel will always stand out to me as one of my best friends in the world because I, was, I started a job at Martha O'Brien Community Center. And I was um, in the daycare work. And Miss Anderson, Miss Paul Anderson, called me in and said, how would you like to run the preschool here? I really think it seems like you could clean up poop and not worry about it. So I would really like you to start the preschool. So I said, I'm happy to do that. And it was, um, a community center that was owned, I think, started by and owned by the Westminster Presbyterian Church. And I worked there five and a half years with very poor integrated families. And uh, it was an education in itself. And that actually propelled me to go back to um, University of Tennessee and get a second master's in social work and I wound up becoming a psychotherapist. And it all got triggered by that family uh, at Martha O'Brien were kicked out of their home because the father in the family was a roofer. And it got to be wintertime and he couldn't continue his work. And he said to his wife, they had five children, and he said, if I leave, maybe you can get on welfare. Uh, but if I'm here, they won't, they won't, they won't give you welfare. And so, um, so Rich Penuel, I, I called Rich Penuel and I said, 
help. I really need some help. This family is being kicked out on the street. Uh, they're behind two months in their rent, and they have a new baby, and the mother has run out of formula, and we're in a pretty big crisis here. And he said he never asked questions except, how much do you want? And I said, oh, Rich, give me enough to pay the rent for the last two months and give me a little extra that I can take this mom. We tried to get on emergency welfare, and that wouldn't happen for two weeks or more. So I said, Rich, just help me. Just give me enough money to go and get groceries with the mother. So the mother and I went shopping together. We got formula. We got bags of oranges and potatoes and things that would last a while and they didn't have to get kicked out of their apartments and and I gave Rich the money left over and said I'm so grateful to you this is truly to me the time that the church is being the church it, it really restored my faith in what the church is capable of and the ministry we had outside the walls of the church. Pat McGahee had been there as pastor, and Pat was very, very creative, and he went over to First Press, but um, in the meantime, his office was in the opposite, a totally opposite building from his secretary, because he spent most of his time in creating music, etc. And so, uh, so when Dad came, when Hartley came, he, he set up headquarters in his office and the staff were just wonderful people. Sherwood Harvard, our associate pastor, um, had a son who went to seminary the same time he went. And Joe Harvard was pastor, wound up pastor at Second Pres in Durham, North Carolina. But Sherwood had a heart attack one time and Hartley went to visit him and he thought he was napping, so he left. And Sherwood said, Hartley, is that you? Is that you? And Hartley said, yes, Sherwood. He said, you know, Hartley, I damn well died last night. I had an out-of-body experience. And, uh, but I came back and we had a wonderful time. I was very close with him and Beck, his wife. And um, Sherwood explained about his out of body experience. And Sherwood's favorite thing to tell us was the relentless return of the Sabbath. He always said the relentless return of the Sabbath. But um, the personalities there in that church, Bobby Graves and I, got to be great friends. Nashville was a wonderful connecting community. That community was very close, very close. And Dorch Oldham and sure. Oh Hal Hobson was our music director. And he was so creative and so what David McCormick had been our music director uh, in Richmond. And we just had the best directors in the world who were also composers. And actually, when my son Hartley married his wife Carolyn, um, Hal created the um, recessional music for Carolyn, which was a gift to her from Hartley. And, uh, we, and then Robert Early was our Minister of Education, and Robert and I were soul friends, and we played tennis a lot and just had the best time, and we would do the Mexican dance with the rose between my teeth and dance for the women of the church. And I gave Robert a tennis racket for his graduation from Vanderbilt Divinity School, and he promptly ran over it, uh, driving away. And, um, but Robert and his family, we became such great friends. And when Robert got married to Kim in our church, um, Hartley and one of his friends, I see, and Hartley had a, it was Bob Whittlesey, sorry. Yes, sir. And they had poster, a poster that they unfurled, and while we were singing the last hymn, 
um, Hartley and and Whittlesey uh, unfurled the, the freeze paper and it said, Robert, way to go, Kim, why? And so the hymn singing turned out to be a gala laughter occasion. Everybody was screaming laughing. And it was just a wonderful wedding. It was so wonderful. And actually, uh, Robert came to me when he was, uh, and he said, I've got to talk to you. And I said, Robert, I can't talk to you now. I'll talk to you tomorrow. He said, no, this can't wait. I'm in love. And I said, please don't marry that rich woman. That's just not going to work out. He said, no, I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about Kim Mathis. And she is the brightest student at Vanderbilt Divinity School. She's six years younger. And I'm just scared to death but I really want to marry her. And I said, well, what is the problem? He said, well, she's smarter than I am. And I said, well, marry and improve the species. So what? And so they did marry, and they've had a great marriage, and they named their firstborn, Anne Hannah, for me and Robert's grandmother. And they are also family. Hartley came up one Mother's Day and said, Mother, here's a flower for you. For Mother's Day, and I said, Hartley, how kind, how sweet of you. And then I passed by the altar, and the arrangement of the roses were the same colors as the rose he had given me. And some of the congregation came by and said, Well, Annie, that is the prettiest rose. And I said, Yes, it's from my son. And I never said anything, but of course, it was from the arrangement. And I thought that was hilarious. We had many meetings. I taught also, in, in addition to the fifth, sixth graders, um, I also taught an adult church school class. And at the time, our governor, Mar Alexander, was there in class. And we had really good discussions. There were three candidates who were members of our church who were running for governor at that time. And when um, the tennis star, uh, Jean, what was her name, who was the tennis star, and she played Bobby... Bobby Riggs? Riggs. Oh, that was... Um... And she beat Bobby Riggs, yeah. and John Thorpe got furious about that, and he challenged me to a match. And I said to Johnny Boone, what am I gonna do? He served so fast, you can't even see the serve. And Johnny said, tell him that the people who are managing you are not going to agree to that. We have to play doubles if we play anything. And John thought was so furious about that match that he said, we're going to serve hot dogs and we're going to set up a stand and we're going to watch this match. And I thought, oh, woe is me, we'll never make it. We just, those were some of the richest years in ministry that time in the Richmond time. And Lenore, the first church after Hartley was chaplain at North Carolina State in Raleigh, where I birthed Grace. And uh, so all four children got through school there. And I think it turned out to be, and thanks in large measure to Pansy Duke. She was a wonderful director of Christian education and was very helpful to us in the transition time.